basic concept. Okay, so today we'll target uh, another very important, these two, path parameters and query parameters. So this is another famous interview question, also this one. And uh, let's go and target, how can we do APA testing with the Postman? So basically Postman is a tool so which helps us to do APA testing. So you can do so many ways. One is uh, using Postman, Soap UI, Tosca, APA GUI, and Catalan Studio, Ready API. A lot of tools are there. All the tools, objective is only one concept only. That is testing the APAs. Use any tool. The methods are same, HTTP word methods, get to, post to, put to, delete. So anywhere you go, these methods are common. So get is always for getting the data and post is for creating the resource from the, you know, inside the server. And put is, okay, you created a resource. You want to update it. Maybe some mistake happened, you want to update it. So that you can use put method to update. So put, so you want to update means you need to give some input, right? That for input also, you'll give input. Post also, you'll give input. But because you're creating, you need to give input. So remember these two methods, you will supply input data. That data you will give in the JSON format. So let's understand what is JSON. So JSON is a, uh, no, as I mentioned, it's a lightweight architecture and independent to different languages. It doesn't depend on the language wise. It's all, you know, different languages you can, so uh, it will be recognized and it will be used. See, it's a very lightweight format for storing and transporting the data between client and server. And the syntax is uh, this the syntax. Curly bracket, curly bracket end. If you use a square bracket, it represents, it's an array. So this is the array name and this is the each object. So you know array inside you have a small, small objects, right? Small, uh, no elements, basically elements we call the, in the array, right? So this is the one element. Next element, second element, third element. So like that. So if you want to access one by one, you have to represent. So this whole JSON dot array name, of square bracket, okay, first one you want, you want to give zero. That means first element you are representing. If you want to give second one, you give square bracket inside one index number. So basically you will represent index numbers. Okay, array in which element you want. That's what we are going to refer. So always data is a name and value pair. So you have to each, uh, no name and value pair you will separate with the comma so next one it will start like that so this is the how uh, json will be used so json object this is the one json object so this is the array json array array inside you have so many things so that's a very simple about json and next topic is status codes this is the another crucial topic for interviews and also you should be clear on that. So status codes, there are different status codes. One series, two series, 200 series, 300 series, 400 series and 500 series. 100 series is basically for just for information purpose. So something you are requesting, and you want to get some information, then 100, 100 status codes you will get. 
after executing your uh, APIs. That's a 100 series. If you get any of these 100, 101, 102, just the information passing to you. So mainly you need to focus on 200 series, 400 series, and 500 series. These three series you need to focus, and that's the main thing you will get in your testing, API testing. So what is mean by 200 OK? 200 is basically for success, okay? That means your request successfully processed in the server and you get the response back. That's the 200 series means. So 200 OK means, so request is processed and you got the output. That's a 200 OK. Generally, you will get a uh, no, get call, you will get a 200 OK. So 201 created. So basically, a post method will give this 201 created. That means successfully the resource is created in the server. That means you will get a 201 created. 202 accepted. Your request went to the server. It is accepted. Accepted by server. That's a 202 accepted. 203, not that much important. 204, okay? Your request is processed, but there is no content to return to you. That's the meaning of 204, no content. And 206, again, 205, also not that much important. 206. So it is processed, but the partial content is returned to you. Not all. That's the 206, partial content means. So this is all about 200 series means. Okay. So this is the 200 series. 200 OK, 201 created, 202 accepted, 204 no content, 206 so partial content. So in this 200 series, all you don't need to remember, but this 200, 201, 202, 204, 206. But these are mandatory to remember. Read multiple times, you will get automatically. So 300 series. 300 means multiple choices. When you If you get a 300, it's a multiple choices given to you. When you are uh, API, so you know, when you hit the send button in the postman, it is uh, going to give you multiple choice for you. But that's not the one. And uh, 301 is moved permanently. That means previously we are using a different API. Now it's moved to <coughs> different end pointer. That's a 301 moved permanently. 302 found. So that's it. Other than that, we don't want much here. And 307 temporary redirect. 308 permanent redirect. So it's redirecting to different URL. That time you will get this. So this is also not that much important than uh, 200 and 400. So 400 is another very important. So 400 series status codes are client side errors. That means it didn't go to server at all. In the client side itself, you are getting these errors, these status codes. So 400 bad request. So it is clearly telling you are getting a 400 means you have given something wrong input to your API. Maybe your input data or your endpoint URL, something not correct. That time you will get a 400 bad request. Don't say 400 bad request means what is mean by 400 bad request. You have to explain. So, 400 bad request means the input, whatever you have given, invalid or malformed or so some data is not correct and uh, endpoint URL is not correct. Such cases you will get a 400 bad request. 401 unauthorized. 401 unauthorized means you are not authorized to 
access this API because you are not providing a token, you are not providing the username password, you are not giving the authorization token. There are different authorization tokens. If you want to access particular API endpoint, if you don't have tokens, then it won't you know, allow you. So you have to give the respectful uh, token. So that token is a uh, very important. So I'll show you how, so you will get a, so this 401 unauthorized. And uh, 402 not important. Next, 403 forbidden. So the, the main question they will ask, what is the difference between 401 and 403? 403 forbidden means you were authorized, but you don't have a permission to access that resource. So then you will get a 403 forbidden. Are you clear on the difference between 401 and 403? Yes, Ramesh. What about others? Good. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Next, 404 not found. That means the resource is not found in the server. Then you will get a 404 not found. Four zero four not found means that is the one. So 405 method not allowed. So are you clear on this 404 not found means? You're requesting some resource, but that is not there in the server. Then you will get a 404 not found. 405 method not allowed. So the endpoint URL is defined for get, but you're using for a post. Then you will get a 405 method not allowed. Clear? So method, which method the endpoint URL is designed, you should know that. Where you will get that information? Each endpoint URL, that uh, you know, schema details, the method, which status code, all this. So, hmm? Service document. Uh, service document. We will get all the details. APA document. What that APA document is called? Swagger document. APA G. And there are different APA documents will be there. So we discussed yesterday Swagger document, right? So that document instead you can find it out. Okay. This APA, which method you have to use, which verb method you have to use. There you can get it. So you should not go blindly. Uh, you can check that endpoint URL structure and what is the status code, what is the input, what are the headers you need to provide, what is the token you have to give, what token you have to give. And uh, so authorization tokens are different, different are there. Basic auth, no auth. Uh, OAuth 1.0, OAuth 2.0, bearer token. So many tokens are there, different authorization tokens. So that tokens you have to specify everything you they will mention in the documentation. That's the
this 405 method not allowed means that's how you know based on that if the endpoint URL method you are using a different one such cases you will get this next 409 conflict remaining these are not that much important but this one 409 conflict so maybe some request already you requested but again you are trying to request with the same data then you will get a conflict 409 conflict so that time you will get a 409 conflict next uh, most important but i think these are all fine this mainly 400 401 403 404 very important 405 you will get 409 you will get and um, yeah this i got one time 415 unsupported media type 414 request your i too long the request URL is very big, then you will get this one also. Other than that, uh, we are good. Yeah, so these are all good. So these are all enough, not more than that. Next, 500 series. So 500 series all server side errors. So if there are server side errors, you will get a 500 series. So 500 internal server error means your request uh, you know, reached the server but not able to process. Then you will get a 500 internal server error. 501 not implemented. That uh, request itself, uh, endpoint URL itself not implemented. That time you will get a 501. 502 bad gateway. So 502 bad gateway. Uh, basically, it is processed, but it's not able to send the response back. That time you will get a 502 bad gateway. And 503 service unavailable. I might I think you might have seen this many times, right? Uh, in India, mostly you will see ATMs service unavailable that means that service is down anything some service is done you will get a 503 service unavailable so always remember if you are getting a 503 means that particular service the micro service i told you there are different services right that service might be down that's why you will get a 503 504 gateway timeout, okay, it's processed, but it is taking more time to process. That time you'll get a 504 gateway timeout. So this is all very important 500 series related. Other than that, you don't need remaining things. So this, at least till 504, to so make sure you have a better idea on this, okay? That's it, uh, status codes. Let's go and execute uh, the API endpoints. Please practice along with me so that you'll get a better, better idea, okay? If you're not practicing, it's uh, going to be a problem. Later, at least later also you try, but better you try so parallel. So when once I know, open the Postman, I, I hope you all downloaded the Postman. So open the postman first. So we are going to execute this postman uh, inside all the APIs. So I'm going to execute one by one. So each method I'll show you and I'll execute one by one, okay? So you can create your own workspace. So that workspace inside you can uh, you know, uh, so my workspace, I can do this one. Otherwise, you can create a new workspace also. New workspace you can create. I can create a new workspace. You can give a name.
after this name you will get like this okay you will get like this and uh, uh, then you can create your collection under workspace you can create many collections so collection is nothing but a group of requests right the collection is nothing but a group of requests and uh, i can add a new collection so you can either you click on this create new collection or you can click on new so any one you it will allow you to create a new collection Postman API practice. That's it. See, you will you will get say this is the collection I created. So this is the collection I created. So in this collection, nothing is there. You can add a a collection inside request. You can add folders. You can see, so mouse over on the collection name, three dots. Click on this, you see so many things. You can share this collection too with others. You can run the entire collection. You can generate the test cases. You can add a request. You can add a folder inside that. You can monitor the collections, mock collections, create a fork view change log, view documentation, rename it, duplicate it, export this collection. So a lot of new options are there, right? So this is all collection level. Now, if you want to add a request, you can add a request, but if you want to add a request, you should know what are the API endpoints, right? So that endpoints I'm giving here to you. So this is the one, API documentation, authorization key you will get here so open this in the separate tab open a new tab this is also authorization key also you open in the new tab both you open in the new tab so this is the documentation api documentation postman apis we are practicing Postman APIs. This one is, you can generate the tokens here. If you want to request a Postman server, you should give a token. So, so you can use your Google to say, you know, you know, register with the Postman. Use your you know, uh, sign in with Google. You can do with the Google. Here I can create my token. You see, you can generate the API key. First, I, I don't want to generate the API key. So let me delete this. And I don't have any keys now. Okay. First, which API you want to practice? So here you can see there are so many. APIs here. So you have collections, you have environments, you have import, you have marks, you have monitors, different collection names these are. So as I mentioned, collection means you have a group of requests. So if you expand this, see so you will get a lot of requests. So you can create a collection, you can get a collection, you can delete a collection, you can update a collection, Update a collection name or a description with the patch. You can now uh, get all collections. Get all collections. So we'll we'll try to use this. You you let's go here. Get all collections. See, get all collections. So what is the the method? Is a get method. So that means you have to select the get method, and the endpoint URL is this one. This is the endpoint here. The perceive, this is the postman in server URL slash collections. This is the endpoint URL. This is the base URL. This is the base URL, server URL, and this is the endpoint URL. That means, so what this method will do, gets all of your collections. The response includes of all your subscribed 
collections. So what do you have to give? See, authorization key you have to give. This is the documentation means. API key and query parameters, what you need to give, it is telling what you have to give. So under response, you will get like this. So see 200 OK status code. So this endpoint should give you 200 status code. So let's go and uh, implement this. Take this URL. Okay, you don't need to copy. See, copy. Simple. It will copy. Go to Postman. Add request. Add request is basically just write simple. I am practicing 401 unauthorized. I want to show you. So the method is a get method. So it's already there. You can choose all your methods here. And then give the URL, endpoint URL. So save it, save this. See, I'm not giving any headers. You have to give, this is the request headers. All this is the request section. And below one is the response. Once you hit the send button, you will get the response here. So that means you're using HTTP work method is a get and endpoint URL, this one, and no parameters, no authorization, no headers. I'm not giving any headers also. If you want to give headers, you can give key value pair format. Key value pair format. I'll just give uh, accept, accept application. Key is the accept, value is the application JSON. You can give like this, or you can give Content type, so content type, application JSON. See, there are, it accepts a different formats, but we are choosing application JSON. That's it. Now you save it so that it will be saved to this request. This is the request name, get to 401 unauthorized. You can change here, whatever you want, you can give here. And it will reflect here. Or you can, so mouse over here, you can rename it. So if you want, you can rename it. Okay, that's a first request. Execute this. So basically what I told you, any post request you want to send the postman server, you must give the token. But did we give a token here? We didn't give a token. If you don't give a token, so I already told you in the status code's time. So what is the status code you will get? 401 and so it is very clearly saying authentication error so invalid api key every request requires a valid api key to be sent but we are not giving that so but we want to test this 401 unauthorized that i am doing that but where are test cases you didn't add any test this is the response you got the response status code, response status message. This is the response message. And you got a body. This is the body. So this is the entire called response body. So response body, this is another object, error object. Error object started here, ending here. See curly bracket start here, end here. This is the error object. So error object inside, of what are the fields are there? Name is one field. Message is another field. So this parent is an error, error object, error JSON object. Error JSON object inside, what are the fields? Two fields you have, name field and that value, message field and that value. So this entire thing is called JSON object. So this, this JSON object doesn't have a name, but JSON object inside you have a, another sub object. That's an error object. Error object inside you have two fields. Two fields you have. Please understand the hierarchy is a very important. So this entire thing is called response body. Response body inside you have another JSON object. This JSON object inside you have a two fields. Key value pair, key value, key value. So this key 
has a value authentication error. Message key has a value this one. So how do you know you got the 401 unauthorized status code? You have to validate, right? That's what the API testing. If you we, we haven't given a token, then this is the expectation. What is the expectation? 401 unauthorized, you should get it. That's your expectation. So how do you test that? So you go to in the request to body. This is the request section. This is the request section. You can see headers, then body for get calls. There is no body request body. Remember that. For get call, there is no request body. None. You're not going to give any input data for get calls. Then prerequisite script, any scripts you want to write, you can write here. This is the one your test cases can be added in the test tab. You want to add any test cases, you will add everything in the test tab only. Now, what is the test my, I want to do first test case in the API testing when you're doing, what you will validate if they ask you. So first you have to tell status code and status message. Then that's the first point you have to tell. What is the next one you have to tell? Response body and response body fields. Are you clear? So these all answers are coming for the questions. These questions you will definitely get in the interview. As part of AP testing, what you will validate? So status code first, then second one, response body data. How you will validate? So you have to tell, go to test tab in the postman. See, there is a predefined status codes here. The predefined snippet, code snippets are available here. Can you see here? Snippets. You don't need to do anything. Just select from here. See all this, that's why it's a very easy API testing. You can see you want to verify a status codes, right? There is option here. Status code is 200. Sir, you are telling 401, but you are telling status code is 200. Just a sample code, you change it. Okay, just select this, select this. So you will get like this, pm.test status code is, and you write your readable statement here. Unauthorized status code, I'll write my own readable statements. 